Greetings. This is a volcano and earthquake watch for July 30 through to August 4. The last 72 hours have seen a stepping up in seismic activities with 5.9 earthquakes registered in the northern mid-Atlantic ridge, the Gulf of California and also Luzon Philippines. It is expected with the emergence of a brand new coronal hole formation and also an earth director coronal mass ejection, the possibility of two earthquakes over 6.6 in magnitude is possible during this watch. Now looking at the latest information from Cactus and we get to see two significant coronal mass ejections as released from the solar corona, both earth bound or earth directed. The estimated time of arrival of these coronal mass ejections could hit the earth's magnetic field sometime July 28 or 29 time frame. The second of the coronal mass ejections appears to be a little bit less intense, but a little bit more faster moving. So it does appear that July 29, we could be receiving a seismic shock based on the arrival of these coronal mass ejections on the Earth's magnetic field. Now looking at the solar terrestrial activity report, and we get to see this coronal hole formation, CH468, that is of most concern for this watch. At the time of this recording, this coronal hole formation will be in the Earth facing position, and it should be in the Earth facing position till around August the 1st. Now looking at the latest telemetry from ACE, we get to see major changes in solar wind speeds over the last 24 hours, where solar wind speeds were at 500 km a second, down to current levels of 326. During this time frame, density and also temperature have decreased quite rapidly. That's an indication that conditions are now ripe for a fairly significant earthquake. Now looking at the GOES X-ray flux monitor, we get to see major changes in activity on this service with an M1.1 class flare recorded yesterday. Now looking at the SEO composite and having a closer look at the northern hemisphere and this fairly powerful looking coronal hole formation that will be in the earth facing position over the next three to four days. There are some deep components within this coronal hole that could produce at least one or two significant earthquakes during this watch. Now having a close up view of the 304 angstrom we get to see this coronal hole formation it does appear to be decaying quite rapidly but it does give us a fairly good look at the regions a little bit more clearly that will be of interest. Now we also see a fairly strong looking filament eruption that occurred just above the earth facing position that could produce a fairly powerful coronal mass ejection over the next 5 to 12 hours. Now looking at the 193 angstrom with solar monitor, I have narrowed down this large coronal hole formation into two separate regions that I feel could produce significant earthquakes. The first region is 27 to 34 degrees north latitude and then following the 35 to 38 degrees north latitude regions. My number one area of concern for this watch is the Japan Islands, or more specifically the Benin Islands, and also the Izu Islands, which are fairly close to each other. I do believe that one of these regions would be at risk for a significant event, based on the latitudes as located from the solar corona, which is 27 to 34 degrees north latitude. My second area of concern is western or eastern Sichuan, China. And my third area of concern is western Turkey. And my final area of concern is for the Canary Islands, and more specifically, a volcanic activation in possibly either the La Palma volcano or the Hierro volcano. Now the Hierro volcano has showed activity of late. The last 72 hours, there have been over 650 tremors that have been recorded in this region. So that is of most concern, and that'll be the main focus for my watch. I'm now gonna be targeting another region associated with this coronal hole that I feel could produce another event, and that's sitting at 35 to 38 degrees north latitude. And the most likely time frame will be towards the end of the watch, from August 2 to August 4. There does appear to be another risk for the Japan region during this watch period, and this coronal hole formation does seem to cover that latitude. And I do feel there is a significant risk for another event in the Japan region. My second area of concern will be the San Andreas Fault, stretching up from Central California to Northern California. I will target two other regions I feel could produce an event, possibly around 5.5 in magnitude, during this watch. The first region is Vancouver Island, and my final region that could produce an event around 5.5 in magnitude could be the Sandwich Island region. We're now looking at the outgoing long wave radiation anomaly. This is a five day moving average, and it shows areas in the globe that could be susceptible of some seismic events based on radiation signatures. The main area this week seems to be around Papua New Guinea, it's also a region just offshore of Japan that is of interest. 
We also see that Baja California and the Gulf of California have also got a little reading here. Also Canada is showing up. And also the North Island of New Zealand has a signature as well. There's also a region just under England and Spain. And we have seen a little bit of activity around this region of late. But the main region seems to be Papua New Guinea. And that's my Volcano and Earthquake Watch for July 28, 2011. Annotations will be added during and at the end of the video. Thanks for watching.